Any horseman can tell you about the dedication it takes to get up before dawn each day to condition horses. For Frank Brothers, his recent retirement means a break from the everyday strain of training thoroughbreds. But as he has discovered, it isn't easy to leave the sport and the animals that you love. Frankie Brothers is perhaps one of the most respected trainers in the game. In 1970, as a young man with an already long background with show horses, Frankie found a job working for eventual Hall of Fame trainer Jack Van Berg, who ruled the roost at Fairgrounds Racecourse. Frankie stayed with Van Berg for 10 years as he quickly moved up from a hot walker to running a division of Van Berg's sprawling operation in various parts of the country. He's probably one of the greatest horsemen that I've ever seen, uh, uh, surely of his generation, uh, and his record speaks for it. He was a, a great teacher, not that he took you under his arm, but the school of hard knocks, you know, but if you were willing to work, you, you could learn. I love my help, I love my people, but I'm a hard worker, I'm a workaholic, and I expect them to do the same thing. He took right a hold, and you never had to, never would he be late. He was late, he had, had died or something, because he was there all the time. I would never put myself on the same level as him, but uh, I, I just tried to kind of model myself after him, you know, to, just to really try to get into the horse's head and be aware of, you know, things that injuries and this, that, and the other. Frankie opened up his own stable in 1980. In the decade that followed, Frankie was the leading trainer at Louisiana Downs for nine consecutive years, where he won over 100 stakes races. He also holds numerous training titles from Fairgrounds, Keeneland, and Churchill Downs. Frankie may be best known for training Eclipse Award winner Hansel, who, although placed 10th in the 1991 Kentucky Derby, went on to win that year's Preakness and Belmont Stakes. And it's Hansel, the beaten favorite in the Kentucky Derby, looking to come back with sweet revenge. And Hansel responds to the whip under Jerry Bailey. He's widening at this point at the eighth pole. Corporate Report comes back on Best Pal to get through second. And inside the final 16th, it's just a question of how far for Hansel. Hansel in the Preakness. When he won the Preakness, I thought to myself when I walked out, uh, to shake Jerry's hand, I thought all he is and all the hard work and all the mornings and all the Christmas days and no holidays, I mean, it, it was worth it to win a classic race. It, it was surely worth it, and I've come a long ways from a guy that was walking hot, you know. In 1996, Frankie began training for the prestigious Claiborne Farm. What followed was a long string of successful horses, beginning with the talented Pulpit, winner of the Bluegrass and Fountain of Youth Stakes. They're coming down to the final furlong, and Pulpit is roused to the lead. Pulpit takes the lead and opens up a length. Blazing Sword is coming hard on the outside, but Pulpit has something left, and Pulpit is the real deal. I'd heard of Claiborne Farm, you know, bef forever, you know, and that's one of the, the old stalwarts, you know, generation after generation of breeding wonderful horses and standing wonderful stallions. Frankie's a throwback, he's, you know, totally in the Claiborne tradition. He, you, know, you never saw Frankie getting any medication violations. He's just a good, thorough, basic horseman. He did a heck of a job with Paul, but uh, he was, you know, a very fast horse, but mentally he was a challenge and uh, physically probably as well. And he did a wonderful job with him. We had some couple nice Lord at War fillies called Watch and Trip. He did a great job with them, but he did a good job with every horse we ever sent him. It was a very pleasant association. If we went to buy a yearling, we'd turn Frankie loose and he'd give us a short list. And of course he controlled it. He'd always get the ones he wanted if we could afford them. But uh, he was an excellent judge of a young horse, none better than Frankie. Frankie's wife, Donna, who also had worked for Jack Van Berg, is the second winningest female jockey of all time. She piloted Hennessy to a second place finish in the 1995 Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Just two months after her retirement as a competitive rider in 1998, she and Frankie were married. And along with her successful career as a television analyst, she continued to be an instrumental part of Frankie's racing operation. 
When I first met Frankie was in Shreveport, Louisiana Downs. I was 17 years old and I was working for Vanberg. And he was, Frankie, you know, he was a Vanberg protege. And so Jack had always told us, if you have any trouble on I'm not in town, go see Frankie. But like everybody on the racetrack, I was pretty intimidated by Frankie. I mean, he just, you know, just the way that he, he was all business. Then one day a mutual friend of ours told us, told me that he was interested in me. And I'm like, Frankie Brothers is interested in me? <laughs> And I was like, well, I guess I could be interested in him, too. Just kind of caught my eye, I guess, you know. It, it was fine when she rode the races. I mean, uh, I rode her on a few horses, and she was an excellent rider. I mean, uh, and she, she did well, and she, she, she's always very professional, and I'd like to think I was very professional, and uh, we, we, we got along good there. Actually, we had some luck together. In 98, we got married, and I retired, and I went to work in his barn shortly thereafter, and it was the same. Um, you know, I, I, when people would say I was um, the assistant trainer or co-trainer or they would call, because Frankie's El Patron, the boss in Spanish, they would call me La Patrona and I'm like, no, 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 solamente trabajo aquí, I only work here. And I always tried to make sure that that was very clear. Frankie is the boss and you guys have to listen to what Frankie says just like I do. All I do is take orders. In March of 2009, at only 62 years old, Frankie decided that his days as a trainer had come to an end. His decision came as a surprise to the racing community. Yet although Frankie can't be found at the barn every morning, he'll always find a way to stay involved in the game he loves. I never did think I would, uh, as I say, die with my boots on in the shed row, you know. Uh, and it's a very confining business, and uh, it's a business that I love, and I love the animals and, and, and all that, but uh, I just uh, strive to play the game on the high side uh, for a, a little guy or a smaller stable, and, and that gets, you know, it's, that was getting a little harder to do. I think he had sort of started entertaining the thought of retiring shortly before Madcap came along. And then Madcap was there and you can't retire. And then First Samurai was there and you can't even think about it. You know, these are the kind of horses that you do this for. I've got mixed emotions about it. I really feel like I'm doing the right thing business-wise and, and I'd like to think I'm doing the right thing personally. Uh, but you just don't walk out of the barn, so to speak, and, and say, well, you know, have, have no feelings about that. You know, it, it's, it, I think it's just something that hopefully in years it'll, it, I'll stay busy enough and do some other things and be involved. And uh, I've always loved the buying yearlings or the kind of the bloodstock part of the deal there. And I've had some luck uh, on something that I never didn't work at that much. In our game, you don't have any opportunities present themselves to you if you're a trainer unless you close that door. And so he had to be willing to say, all right, I'm going to close the door on this career and see what else opens up for me. And, you know, that was a big step. That took a lot of um, bravado, especially for somebody who really doesn't like change very much. <laughs> I think he has a future that he's looking forward to, and it allows him to travel with me, so it's great. But it's nice to sleep in a little bit longer and get up and take your time and do what you want to do. And uh, uh, But like I said earlier, I, I probably, I will miss the horses. So that's, that's, that's the whole deal, you know because they've been my life, so, you know, uh, forever, pretty much. And, uh, but I expect I'll be around enough of them.